Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So welcome back and uh, this is lecture number 43 and today we will discuss uh, rank of a matrix from this uh, uh, topic of the matrix algebra or linear algebra. And uh, the definition we start with which we have mentioned in one of our previous lecture that is the rank of a matrix is the number of non-zero rows or the number of pivots uh, in its reduced row echelon form. So this that is that's why this uh, row reduced echelon form is very important, it, it tells us a lot about the matrix and that is one uh, important concept which is used uh, uh, at various applications about this rank. So, rank of the matrix is the number of uh, the pivots which we uh, see in our reduced uh, row echelon form. So, for instance, we take this A which was already used in previous lectures. Uh, we have also seen its uh, row reduced echelon form which uh, is given here again. So, this is the row reduced echelon form of this matrix and uh, what is now we need to count the pivots here. So, the one is the pivot and also this one is the pivot and this two is the pivot. So, we have one, two, three. There are three pivots here in this row reduced echelon form and therefore, the rank of this matrix uh, is 3. So, there are 3 pivots and the rank as per the definition that rank of the matrix is nothing but it is a, it's a number of uh, pivots in a reduced row echelon form which is 3 in this example. Just a consequence of this uh, definition, we can easily uh, make it out that the rank of an m cross n matrix cannot be uh, greater than n or m. So, m is the number of rows and number of columns and the rank cannot be greater than uh, m or n. It has to be the, the less than the minimum of m and n. The reason is clear because uh, our uh, the, the each row or each column cannot have more than one uh, pivot. The column can have at most one uh, pivot or the row also it can have at most one pivot. Uh, one row cannot have a two pivots or more, a column cannot have a two pivots or more. So, we are talking about the number of pivots. So, it cannot be the, the rank cannot be greater than m the minimum of it has to be less than or equal to the minimum of this m and n this number. We'll write down the solution by taking these free variables that is the uh, x 2 here and also this x 5. So, taking these free variables we can write down this a x is equal to 0 the solution of this a x is equal to 0 in this form which we have already observed because now what we are going to do we are actually uh, we are looking for the other definitions of the rank because that is not the only definition which we have given in terms of the number of pivots. So, that for that we just need some preparation here. So, if we notice now the case 1 if we take this alpha 1 is equal to 1 and alpha 2 is equal to 0. So, that will be one solution of this system by choosing these alphas basically we are uh, looking for different different solutions. So, for this particular case we are taking choosing this alpha 1 as 1 alpha 2 as 0. So, our solution of this a x is equal to 0 will become uh, minus 2 1 uh, 0 0 0. So, this is the solution of our a x is equal to 0 of this system and then this a x is equal to 0 this equation 
we can write down in this form this we have already uh, talked before that this product of this matrix A with this uh, x here the x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4 and x 5. So, this product A and this with the x we can also write down as this x 1 and then the first column plus this x 2, the second column x 3, the second third column x 4, this fourth column x 5 and this fifth column 1 3 4 1 and this is equal to 0. So, that is another way of looking at this matrix uh, vector product we can write down in this vector forms. So, having this now and what we have observed that this is one solution of this system of equations with uh, minus 2 for x 1 and this here uh, 1 for. So, this is uh, minus 2 and this x 2 is 1 and this we can take 0 all these 0. So, what we observe now with this that minus this 2 times the C 1 denotes this column 1 of our matrix. So, this C 1 minus 2 C 1 plus C 2 is equal to 0. So, what we observe at least from this relation that this column 1 and column 2 are dependent. We can write down this column 2 here in terms of column 1. So, column 2 is nothing but the 2 times the column 1. So, that is the relation which we can trivially see from uh, directly from the matrix itself because, but sometimes this is not easy to see when we have uh, more vectors in into picture here there were 2 vectors only. So, we can see easily. So, that is the one relation we have seen that this uh, C 2 the column 2 is nothing but the 2 times C 1. So, these 2 columns are, are dependent columns. One more observation quickly we will have now, we will take another case where we will choose this alpha 2 b 1 and this alpha 1 to be 0. That means, our solution now of this A x is equal to 0 is given by this minus 9.50 minus 4 minus 0.51 with this vector and that uh, this A was given already. So, again this first column third and fourth they are the columns which have the pivots in their reduced in its reduced form. So, here A x is equal to 0 again with this observation we will uh, fix this solution now. So, the solution says that uh, this minus 9.5 of this and then 0 here and this x 3 is minus 4 and then x 4 minus uh, 0 0.5 and then this x 5 is 1. So, with this relation now what we observe that this is minus 9.5 the column 1 minus 4 times this column 3 and minus 0.5 the column 4 and plus this column 5 must be equal to this 0 vector uh, which has all these components 0 or we get basically this relation that C 5 is nothing but 9.5 C 1 plus 4 C 2 plus 0.5 C 4. So, what we observe again that the C 5 here the column 5 depends on uh, these columns C 1, C 3 and C 4. Also, this uh, column number 2 from the, from the previous case we have observed that this is nothing but the 2 times of the column 1. So, this column 2 is dependent also we have observed that column 5 is dependent and they depend on these uh, columns which have the pivots. Another observation which we can uh, find out from the, the from that reduced uh, uh, echelon form that these vectors with red here the column number 1, column number 3 and column number 4. So, these vectors here one can easily prove uh, directly from that reduced form that these are linearly independent. These are linearly independent that from the reduced form one can uh, talk about this. And we have seen that these columns here corresponding to those free variables they are linearly dependent and this is the general result also not just for this particular example that the columns which have the pivots in, in its reduced form they are linearly independent always and the other columns which have these free variables or where they do not have the pivots they actually are linearly dependent. So, now we can rewrite our definition which says uh, for this rank that this is nothing but the number of pivots, 
but now we can write down uh, as the number of independent columns. The rank is nothing but the number of independent columns in because this column is dependent, this column is also dependent. So, there are three independent columns and they basically correspond to this pivot columns. So, now our definition for the rank is that rank is nothing but the number of independent columns in a matrix. And again the same observation which we have done here with, with the columns we can do with the rows as well. So, those rows where we got these uh, pivots there are there, there are the same number of rows which are independent in this uh, matrix. So, we, we can have also this definition that the rank is nothing but the number of independent rows and they are the same the column because uh, the, the number of pivots are, are basically uh, fixed in, in, a, in a, its reduced form. So, what we have we can now give another definition. The rank of a matrix is the number of linearly independent rows or number of linearly independent columns in a matrix that is the rank. One more definition we are going to, to give in a minute before that we just define uh, these two spaces. The column space uh, is nothing but the span of the column vectors of A. So, for a given matrix A, we take its column as vectors and then span them. So, that is uh, what we call the column space because any span of any vectors that is a vector space which we have already seen in previous lectures. So, here also the span of these vectors of the uh, or the, the columns or column vectors of, of this A will also form a vector space which we call the column space. So, the column space is a vector space that is nothing but the span of the columns of A. Similarly, we have the row space, row space is nothing but the span of the row vectors of A similar to the column space if we take the rows there and span them. So, this space uh, which we call the row space and the another definition which we have now for the rank. The rank of a matrix is the dimension of the row space because when we are talking about the rows for instance. So, uh, what will be the dimension of the row space? The dimension will be the number of linearly independent rows in, in that span in that uh, set here. So, the number of linearly independent uh, rows which is actually the definition of again with the rank. So, here the dimension of the row space is nothing but the but the uh, number of linearly independent rows in the matrix or the dimension of the column space. So, the dimension of the column space is nothing but the it is the number of linearly independent columns in the in the matrix A. So, we have already these three definitions so far the rank is nothing but the number of pivots in its reduced row reduced echelon form. The definition number 2 the rank of a matrix is nothing but the number of linearly independent rows or number of linearly independent columns of the matrix and we in the terms of the dimension we can also say that the rank is nothing but the dimension of the row space or the dimension of the column space of A. There is a rank nullity theorem which uh, we will just observe with the help of the example. So, again we will continue with the same example. So, we have this A here and its reduced form we have these uh, pivot elements. We had also the solution A x is equal to 0 which was written in this form uh, x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4 is equal to alpha 1 times this uh, generator plus alpha 2 times the another generator which generates the solutions. So, here the rank of A is 3 because it is a number of linearly independent rows or number of linearly independent columns or the number of pivots we have this rank 3. What is the nullity of A? Nullity uh, remember the nullity was uh, the dimension of the of the null space and the null space here is the solution set of this A x is equal to 0. So, the solution set of A x is equal to 0 we have the dimension 2 because these are the two vectors which can generate any 
any solution of this uh, set and these two vectors are linearly independent. So, here the nullity of A is 2 because of these. So, this is uh, precisely the number of these free variables in, uh, in row reduced echelon form. In general or first let us uh, talk about this example once again. So, here we have rank 3 and this nullity is 2. When we add these 2, so 3 plus 2 will we will get give the, we will get the number of uh, these variables here number of unknowns in A x is equal to 0. The reason is clear because the rank defines exactly the, the, the number of pivots here and this nullity is nothing but the number of these non pivots. So, we are covering each column for instance here. Here we have pivot. So, that will go count to the rank here. So, 1 here 1 plus 1 and 1 this plus 1. So, we have the 3 rank because these 3 columns have uh, pivots and these 2 columns do not have uh, pivot. So, they will be free variables and that is nothing but the nullity of A. So, this will add to the to the to the n here uh, which uh, are the number of columns or the number of unknowns in A x is equal to B. So, this 2 3 plus 2 will add to that uh, 5 in this case uh, we have 5 columns. In general well, how do we read this? The nullity of A is nothing but the dimension of the null space which was 2 in this previous case uh, meaning the number of free variables or in our notation we also uh, take this number of free variables as n minus r because we have n columns and the r are the rows where we have the pivots. Uh, so, this n minus r or this r is the rank basically of the matrix because these are the rows where the pivot is sitting. So, the rank of A is r that is a number uh, of, the, of the pivot elements. So, here the rank is r and this nullity is n minus r. So, this rank nullity theorem is nothing but it says that the rank of a matrix plus nullity of the matrix. So, r plus this n minus r must add to n the number of the columns in the matrix. So, this is called the rank nullity theorem rank of A plus nullity of A is equal to n. Now, here we will find the rank of the matrix. So, rank of this matrix here 3 0 2 2 and then. So, what do we need to do for finding the rank we have to convert to the uh, row reduced echelon form. So, in this case we will try to set this to 0 here with 2 times the row 1 we will add and that will give us 0 here. This 42 will remain as it is and here the 24 and minus uh, this uh, 2. So, this will be uh, 28 and then we have 58 there. So, we are adding actually. So, 2 times of uh, 2 times of this row 1 we are adding to this one. So, this was 24 and then 2 this is 28 here also 54 plus 2 plus 4 it is a 58 and similarly here we will be uh, multiplying here by uh, 7 and then subtracting. So, we will get uh, this uh, row. So, this is the first iteration of the reduction that we have set these elements here below this 3 uh, to 0. Now, we will take this element and try to uh, get eliminate now this here minus 21 with the help of this row 2. So, that will be the next step. So, the first row and the second row will remain as it is and now we will uh, try to put this to 0. So, that means the half of this we are adding we are adding to this row here. So, this becomes 0 this also becomes 0 and this also becomes 0. So, this is the row reduced echelon form and uh, in this row reduced echelon form we have to count now the number of uh, pivots. So, we have one pivot here we have the another pivot as 42. So, the total pivots here uh, we have 2 and that is what the rank here is of this matrix uh, is 2. So, this is a simplest way of getting the rank we just uh, take the matrix and try to reduce it to the row reduced form and then count the number of pivots and that is precisely the rank of the matrix. Let us take the another example where we will find the rank of A the A is given by this 1 2 0 minus 1 and 2 6 minus 3 and minus 3 1 4 4 5. So, with this matrix 
again we will uh, reduce it to the rho reduced echelon form. So, the first we will set these elements to 0, so 2 and 1, so where we get 0, 0 here. In the second step now we will try to set them to 0 below this 2, so it is set to be 0 and now we can count uh, the uh, pivots here. So, this is the pivot and this is pivot and this is also pivot here. So, we have 3 pivots in this case and therefore, the rank of this matrix A is 3. There is another uh, way of uh, determining this uh, rank in terms of the determinant. So, that we will shortly now give. So, first the definition here of the sub matrix. Suppose this A is any matrix of order m cross n, then a matrix obtained by leaving some rows and some columns from A is called a sub matrix. So, a matrix is given, we remove let us say first row, the third column, then whatever left this matrix is a sub matrix or we can remove uh, more rows, more columns. So, whatever this is smaller uh, matrix by removing some rows and some column that is called the, the sub matrix. So, here the rank is defined uh, can be also defined from this uh, determinant uh, as that n m cross n matrix A has rank R, this will have rank R when if and only if A has R cross R sub matrix. So, the square is square a sub matrix with non-zero determinant. So, we have to now uh, get out of this given matrix R cross R sub matrix which has the non-zero determinant whereas, the determinant of every square determinant of every square sub matrix of R plus 1 or more rows is 0. So, we have to start with the whole matrix. If for example, it is a 2 by 3 matrix, then 2 by 2 uh, uh, sub matrices we have to look and see if they all are 0, then we have to go to the 1 level uh, and so on. So, we have to see now this sub matrix with non zero determinant. In a particular case, when A is a square and cross n matrix, it has the rank n if the determinant A is not equal to 0. So, if we have a square matrix and its determinant is not equal to 0, then it has a full rank. So, the rank is n because determinant itself is not 0. If the determinant is 0, then we have to reduce uh, to this different sub matrices of uh, uh, order n minus 1. We have to check all the uh, sub matrices of order n and their determinant. If they all are 0, then we have to reduce to n minus 2 and so on. But for instance, this n minus 1 sub matrices, even 1 has a non-zero uh, determinant, then uh, the, the uh, uh, rank will be that n minus 1. And rank of a 0 matrix is 0, because we do not have for example, here this uh, any sub matrix with non zero determinant, any sub matrix we take even up to level 1 also because all the entries are 0. So, the all the sub matrices you take whatever order uh, the determinant is going to be 0. So, this is uh, what we call the rank of a, a 0 matrix is 0. Here we will take this uh, simple example A which 3, 1, 2 and the 6, 2, 4, 3, 1, 2. So, in this example, we can observe that this determinant of this A is 0, which is clearly visible because here 3, 1, 2 and this row is also 3, 1, 2. So, the determinant of this uh, will be 0. So, the determinant of A is 0. That means, now the, the rank cannot be uh, 3, because we are not getting this 3 by 3 uh, matrix it should be non-zero, the determinant should be non-zero, then the rank will be 3. So, now the rank will be less than 3. So, we have to check now the sub matrices, the determinant of sub matrices of order 2 by 2. So, if we take any this 2 by 2 um, sub matrix, for example, we take this one by leaving the second row, uh, third column and the third row. So, we have this determinant and now the uh, determinant here will be 6 minus 6. So, again this 0 
we take any other 1, 2, 2, 4, one more sub matrix, here also this is 0 when we take the determinant. Any determinant we take this 6, 4, 6 and this 4 and 3 and 2. So, here also 12 minus 12, 0. So, any, any determinant we take of order 2 by 2 out of this matrix, the answer is uh, 0. So, all 2 by 2 sub matrices have 0 determinant and that is the reason here we uh, uh, now have to look for this uh, determinant of order 1, but that is a non-zero matrix anyway. So, whatever uh, value uh, we have, so the, 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 the rank has to be 1 in that case because it is not the 0 matrix. So, here the rank is 1. And uh, in this example 2, we take another example where we check that again this determinant of A is uh, 0. So, when determinant A is 0, the rank has to be less than or equal to the order of the matrix here, it is a square matrix. So, the rank of A has to be less than 3 and uh, in this case, uh, we also observe for instance, this determinant itself we take 1, 3, 2, 4 and the value is not equal to 0, the value is 4 minus uh, 6 minus 2. So, this is not equal to 0. So, we have a sub matrix whose determinant, the sub matrix of order 2 whose determinant is not 0 and there we can decide now the rank, the rank has to be 2. Though it is little bit difficult than the, the earlier uh, process of getting the rank where we reduced to the uh, row reduced echelon form and then we can easily identify what is the rank. Here you have to look for uh, these uh, different orders of determinants and, and check whether something is non-zero. So, for example, this was easy, we have easily seen that this uh, sub matrix has determinant non-zero. So, the rank is 2. If you take the identity matrix here, the 1, 1, 1, we know that the uh, determinant here is 1 which is not equal to 0 and therefore, the rank of this matrix is 3. Coming to the conclusion, what we have seen the various definitions of the rank, one was the number of pivots in the, uh, in the row reduced echelon form, the other one was the number of linearly independent rows, uh, there was a number of linearly independent columns. And we can also talk about the dimension of the column space that is nothing but the rank, dimension of the row space that also is the rank. And we have also discussed the rank in terms of the determinants. So, these are the references used here and thank you for your attention.